Okay, so the last uh, video here on paper chromatography is going to talk about uh, the experiment itself. So the way you're going to set this up is you're going to have a piece of these uh, paper that you can get from the uh, instructor bench. Uh, the first thing is you're going to split that paper into the different ions that you're going to run on the paper chromatography experiment. So in this case, there's five ions. Uh, in your example, you might have all five ions or you might not have one of them. Uh, it just depends on what the stockroom provides. And then there's a line that's called a known line or the mixture line. That one is just a line that contains all of the ions mixed together. Okay, so that's why sometimes it's also called a mixture line. And then there's going to be two samples here of unknowns, but they're really the same unknown. Okay? The only difference between these two unknowns is that one is spotted twice, the other one is spotted four times. And I'll talk more about that in a little bit. One thing I want to point out here is when you're writing these things down, you're making these measurements of lines, make sure they're all done in pencil so that they don't actually interfere with the experiment itself. The line from the bottom to the top here could be between 1 to 1.5 centimeters. So your sample is going to come in this form right here. You notice that what the stockroom has done here is provided all the different ions name on it. And then there's also something called a mix, which remember is all of the ions combined together. And if you can see through here, you can see that there's some of these tubes inside each of the test tubes. There's some of these small tubes. Those are called capillary tubes. Those are the tubes you're going to use, glass tubes you're going to use to actually spot your sample onto the paper. Here's what it looks like. Uh, the capillary tube is these guys right here. They're inside the actual test tube. Uh, when you take them out, hold them, you see that there's some solution inside the capillary tube already. That's because of capillary action by water, so it climbs up a little bit into the glass. That is more than enough sample to spot. You actually only need maybe like less than that, maybe half of that to spot onto your paper. What you're going to do is take that capillary tube and just hold it upright and then put a spot on each of the ions and then the mixture sample and then your unknown sample. The size of this spot shouldn't be too big or too small. You want it to be a certain size. Uh, I would go make sure that it's it's uh, big enough that you actually have sample but you don't want to be too big because once it gets too big it might interfere, run into the other lane and then it might contaminate the other sample. Okay? This is how you're going to apply the sample. You notice that uh, I recommend holding the uh, capillary tubing upright and just dip it and you know hold it push it down so the sample goes to the paper you don't need to do it too hard right the water would transfer to the paper pretty quickly and you don't want to have too much of it goes in there okay so dip it one time uh, and then just that's it okay now there's some of these samples that need to be spotted a couple of times if you're going to have to spot the sample a couple of times, in this case the known sample has to be spotted three times, make sure you spot it, okay, and then dry it first, okay. You can dry it either just by sort of waving the paper around, uh, air dry it, or you can take it to a heat lamp. There's a heat lamp uh, in the different parts of the lab. You can just put the paper under a heat lamp that's also going to dry up the sample and then come back and spot it again a second time okay and then dry it again come back and spot it a third time that's how you're gonna spot multiple spots you don't just spot them all three times right away okay same thing with the ones where you have to spot two times and four times for the unknown now let me repeat that again about the unknown the unknown is actually the same unknown let's say you pick unknown number one you're gonna spot for this sample you're gonna spot it twice for this sample, you're going to spot it four times. So that's the only difference between these two. It's not that you're going to pick one unknown here and another unknown here. It's the same unknown. They're just spotted two different ways because in case something happens with this one, you have this one as a backup, or if something happens with this one, you have that one as a backup. So the solution you're going to use to actually run it, the solvent system, is this solvent system right here. So it's not water, but it's a mixture of some organic solvent. You're going to pour that solvent into a beaker uh, and they tell you how much to get uh, so that it just you know barely covers the paper at the bottom okay 
and then you put the paper in there. Paper has to be rolled up looking like this. Um, and you notice here that the sample is on the outside. That's uh, part of the sample is on the outside of the paper. Uh, so you wrap it up this way. You put a tape on the top and maybe tape in the middle so that it would, uh, you know, stay uh, like a cylinder together in that solution. But you notice that the solvent is very low here, right? And then you just cover it up with parafilm. And that thing should slowly rise up. And we're going to use um, that time to actually do another different part of the lab. But that's going to be what the experiment is. When it's done, the first thing you want to make sure you do is draw up that solvent line before everything dries up. As soon as you take that paper out, draw that solvent line so you know where that solvent is. Take that piece of paper and just drop it into a developing solution which is going to be in a tray in one of the fume hoods. As soon as you developed it, you should see a bunch of different dots. Example shown in this uh, particular paper chromatogram. So you see all these different dots corresponding to different ions. This is done with a different solvent system, so it's not the one that you're going to see. Uh, but it would look something similar to this, okay? And so once you have that, you just need to dry your paper, take a picture of it, and then measure the distances. Again, the distance would be from the beginning. The starting line is marked here to the center of each spot. And then you're going to have to calculate your RF, which is dividing that distance by the distance from the beginning to the distance of the solvent. Here's a quick example of one of the spots. For example, let's say I measure from the center to the center, I um, mean, the, the beginning to the center of that spot is 3.05 centimeters. There will be rulers provided for you in the lab. And then I measure from the beginning to the solvent line is 5.33 centimeters. I can divide this number by that number, and that should give me my RF value.